the goal is to provide a high level overview of some of the activities with respect to standardization, but particularly focus on the IEEE 802.11bb standard. And I believe uh, the previous speaker uh, from Signify, Musa, was able to provide some high level context. So uh, hopefully this will, this will help in that um, space. So as Professor Haas said, my name is Nikola Serafimovsky. I'm the VP for Standardization and Business Development within Pure LiFi. Um, and what we'll be talking about today is a brief introduction of who is Pure LiFi, the Light Communication Alliance, which was already touched on by um, Musa, how LiFi and 5G will work together, and then really zoom in on the IEEE 802.11bb LiFi standard. So Pure LiFi, um, we are a relatively small organization, about 40 people. We were co-founded by Professor Harold Haas. Uh, we've been working on LiFi for the last almost 10 years, since 2012. We've developed a lot of world's first, including the world's first LiFi ASIC, a gigabit optical front end, a roadmap to multiple gigabit components, uh, and a number of different awards. We are really hoping to get everyone to work together and really build the ecosystem to make LiFi a global success. So Pure LiFi will be the industry innovator and the leading supplier of light antenna components powering the LiFi revolutions. We've started with systems to prove that LiFi is possible and that it has use cases today that are really meaningful for the market. And of course, our future is getting those systems into more, much more component structure and getting them to be applicable throughout the ecosystem, whether that's in lights or mobile devices and mobile phones or TVs and other smart appliances. So if we look at the light communication uh, ecosystem, again, uh, my colleague mentioned this, LiFi really tries to encompass a lot of different partners and all of these pillars are necessary for the real success of the technology in everything from research organizations to telecom operators, chipset vendors, device, in, uh, device integrators, um, infrastructure providers, and more. I suppose one thing that's important to clarify is when we talk about light communications, there are different types of light communications. There's optical camera communications, which addresses a different set of use cases, which is using kind of um, very low data rate unidirectional communications. There's visible light communications, which has been sometimes used to only talk about geolocation and advertisement notifications, or has been used also to talk about Li-Fi. And Li-Fi, we believe, is secure high-speed mobile wireless communications. And a lot of the talks presented today have really pertained to that aspect uh, and yesterday. And then there's, of course, free space optics, which has been a well-established technology and around for a long time that delivers high-speed, you know, long-range point-to-point communications. So we'll really focus on Li-Fi in this uh, talk. One of the important things that we're looking at is how does Li-Fi integrate in the world of 5G and, and beyond? So this is one of the very early white papers that was developed by the Light Communication Alliance and some of the early members there to try and position how Li-Fi works with Wi-Fi and with 5G. And where we really see the fit is this kind of beyond 5G new radio, which is 3GPP revision 15 that is being deployed as we speak. The next generation we feel strongly will be very light centric because of all of the advantages that many of the previous speakers have uh, discussed. So if you, if you have any questions, you know, I encourage you to have a look at the paper and uh, it's a high level overview. It's a couple of years old now, but we think it's still relevant at a, uh, at a high level. If we zoom in a little bit more and if we look at what 5G fits and where 5G is today, this was the very first paper from the Next Generation Mobile Network back in 2015 that kind of highlighted the general view of what 5G would be. And you have a number of options of how that system will be deployed. And if you look at where we are today with uh, a lot of the companies rolling out 5G. It's really a new radio capability that's connected to some of the core functionalities that were previously present within the 3GPP um, or 4G networks. So Li-Fi really fits in this context as part of the Wi-Fi integration and making that a consistent message. If we look at some of the timelines for the deployments, um, 
you know, you have effectively 2021 now where we see a lot of 5G new radio launches and a lot of gearing for 5G uh, new radio revision 16, which is also the 5G evolution that are now creating. The IEEE 802.11bb is looking to have a good stable draft in the course of 2021 and is going to be publicly releasable in 2022-2023, as Musa said. But in reality, a lot of the core elements are already in place, which means that commercial pre-standard products can already be developed. So hopefully we'll see a synchronization between Li-Fi, Wi-Fi, and 5G um, in the early part of 2022, maybe mid-2022. So important, it's important to note here that the IEEE 802.11, which standardizes Wi-Fi and 3GPP, work together to try and define how best to deploy the technology. So I've provided a number of publicly available documents that the 802.11 working group has, made, uh, has been working on to try and address how you can deliver a unified user experience with Wi-Fi and 5G and how the end customer can really benefit from both of those technologies. I've provided the slides here as a point of reference for anybody that might be interested, but I won't go into too many of the details. The core part is to understand that there are two high level uh, integration processes that are quite complicated, but importantly are well established between 5G and Wi-Fi, which means organizations in particular telecom providers know how to meaningfully integrate these two technology. One of them is treating Wi-Fi as a untrusted integration element into the 5G core, and the other one is looking at it as a trusted integration into the 5G core. Again, um, without going into too many details, I encourage anyone that's really interested to look at those documents presented previously and, and um, read through that. So I raise this because the integration between Wi-Fi and 5G is very complicated. And we want to make the integration of Li-Fi into any future networks as simple as possible. With this in mind, the IEEE 802.11bb task group was created to uh, develop a global standard for Li-Fi. It is really targeting the definition of a new physical layer uh, anywhere in the visible light spectrum looking at new physical layer uh, modes that will deliver at least five gigabit per second for at least one of them and how you can have interoperability among different solid state lighting sources with different modulation bandwidths from a mac perspective the amendment specifies changes minimal changes to the 802.11 mac specifically the hybrid coordination function which is the channel access any potential changes on the overlapping basic services, which is OBSS, effectively interference uh, detection and coexistence, and understanding what existing power management modes will be most suitable for light communications. The project is also looking to address any security transition between the new LC uh, FI and the existing 802.11 FIs that might happen uh, when this is introduced and what the consequences of a fast session transfer functionality might be. So with that, the 802.11bb is on track to produce a stable technical draft for July 2021. The three FI modes have already been agreed. 802.11a will be used as the common mandatory mode, and there are two optional modes. 11ax will be used as the high efficiency light communication mode and the G.9991, which is the ITU standard uh, physical layer as an optimized LC communications mode. So effectively every TGBB device will need to communicate over 802.11a protocols on the light medium, but then has an option to potentially support either 11ax or G.9991 or potentially both, uh, depending on how the system is done. The common mode and the high speed and the high efficiency LC electrical bandwidths and channelizations have all been agreed with two 160 megahertz channels being established. As we've seen from the talks, 320 megahertz of bandwidth is not impossible and is actually very frequent with a variety of different chips and um, emitter and detector technologies. 
And very importantly, the common wavelength has been agreed as 800 to 1,000 nanometers. This is effectively the near infrared. And the near infrared was chosen for a number of reasons, including the um, very um, high availability of near infrared devices, the eye safety considerations with respect to the deployment of the system, and of course, the user aspect, which is when you have a light communication device or a Li-Fi uh, device, you really don't want it to shine in uh, the user's eyes. So while the transmit section on the ceiling might very well be visible light, you really want uh, something that is in the infrared spectrum from the user side. So again, focusing in on this, the TGBB already did a first round of comment collection for this physical layer mode. And most of those comments have been reviewed and addressed. The proposals are now moving forward <clears throat> for understanding how the clear channel access mechanism is going to function in uh, Li-Fi. And with that and a couple of, and also how the definition of an antenna should be, which is effectively the optical front end, you know, how do you define that part from a standardization perspective? And with those things uh, complete, then the standard should be in good shape to create uh, or to allow people to deploy and the next generation of wireless communication systems based on Li-Fi. This is a very open discussion and anyone is encouraged to join us. You can find the links to all of the 802.11 uh, upcoming calls on that link that's been provided there, and in particular, TGBB. So it's free to join. Anybody that is interested is more than welcome to come, and we'll work through um, some of the ideas that might be presented. I guess the highlight for, for me in, in this context is TGBB is really the only standard that will natively connect Li-Fi with 5G because those mechanisms already exist and they're already there. And as we look to lowering the barrier to entry, Wi-Fi chipsets already exist and are natively supported in almost every single mobile communication device in the world. And many non-mobile devices like TVs or speaker systems or smart fridges, which is why we feel that 802.11 is the best place for Li-Fi to make sure that it has the biggest applicability and the broader set 